Welcome back. What is it that makes a difference? The difference between some people that get information, maybe one time, use it, act upon it, and benefit from it, and those people have to hear it many times. Or those people who always seem to come back to a seminar or buy a new product, but just leave it tucked away somewhere on the shelf. It's not our capability that actually determines our results. What people can do is pretty extraordinary. What they will do is often pretty disappointing. It's the difference between whether you say to yourself, I should do this, I should go and invest my money, I should leave my job, I should go for that promotion, I should play with my kids more, I should pay more attention to my partner. I should, I should, I should, I should. End up shoulding all over yourself. The difference between that and the word must. The word must has a resonance in it. When you give a command, one is like a, a preference, one is like I might, and the other one must is like a command, and it acts like a command in the human nervous system and calls us completely and immediately to action. You have an amazing power. I'm not going to give you the power. It's something that you already have. All I'm going to do is ignite your passion. I'm literally going to light the match that you've been holding this entire time and organize your thoughts and your actions to produce consistent results. Failure is not an overnight event, and frankly, nor is success. Because even you see someone suddenly successful, we haven't seen the hours of dedication and practice and potential failure that have gone before it. Failure is the result of a failure to follow through, a failure to make the phone calls, a failure to be loving, a failure to enforce boundaries around you. But little one step at a time actions that build one on top of another can produce an amazing result over time. And that is what this program is about. I have incredible respect for you. Even though I don't know you personally yet, the fact that you have picked up this program tells me you're the kind of person that's not willing to accept what is. You're always looking to have something more, to expand and to grow. That's not to mean to say that what is isn't great, but you can always be grateful for it and then you can have it expand more in your life. And you're searching for the answers. But I'll make sure I do my part here in making sure I give you the maximum value that I can. My primary driving question that's driven my life for the last eight to nine years now is why does anybody do what they do? What drives your behavior? Be that taking massive action, procrastinating and self-doubt, succeeding, distracting ourselves by watching TV, going on the internet, idle gossip, or whether it's controlling others or allowing ourselves to be controlled. What is it that makes us do the things that we do? To get the very best results, we've got to have the power of concentrated focus. Anything that you and I focus on will cause our results to improve over time, provided we get some good feedback. But most people don't know how to control their mental focus. In fact, most people major in minor things, meaning they get caught up making a living rather than designing a quality of life that most people only ever dream of. We get caught up with the small things that really, in the whole scheme of life, don't really matter. I actually think it would work better if only we could turn that statement around. If, in fact, you would minor in major things to begin with, then certainly your results would make a massive, massive difference. And here's why. Because I believe this statement to be true. If anything's worth doing, it's worth doing badly. <laughs> because when you do something for the first time, we're normally not very good at it. And because of that, and because we often benchmark ourselves against somebody else that we know that's almost a master in this field, we look at our performance falling way short and we say to ourselves, well, I can't do this. But of course you can't do it. You've never done it before. Only by doing it a number of times can we ever learn what we need to learn to become excellent at something. Look, I don't know what you do for a living right now, but... Is it fair for me to assume they're at least competent at what you do, if not excellent at this thing that you do? But how do they get good at what you do? How do you become excellent at what you do? Isn't it true that you spent 
a lot of time doing this one activity. Haven't you had a lot of people around you, a peer group of people that also did exactly the same thing, all pulling in the same direction? Haven't you had some feedback along the way? Haven't you been rewarded for some things? And shall we say, <laughs> not rewarded for other things? And so you figured this thing out and you become excellent at this thing that you do. And yet, for most people, they've become excellent at something that will never, ever, ever most likely lead to their financial freedom. What if instead they'd focus their attention and their efforts on something that could lead to financial freedom? Learning how to become a master of internet marketing. To be able to market products online, either your products or somebody else's products that you affiliate with. Learning how to drive traffic to your website. Because these days, of course, the world is our oyster. We don't have to base a local business somewhere close to us with a shop and hope that customers will come to us. Now we can go to them. And the world is our entire place where we can do business. Learning how to master that surely would be a great idea. Learning how to invest in property, how to buy undervalued properties, the financial mechanics of how to finance those properties correctly. Learning how to invest in the stock market or commodities. You see, these are all the things that rich and successful people do. That's what you'd be doing if you're copying a rich person. But most of us are majoring in minor things. And in this instance, I'm saying that many people's work choices, their vehicle for making money, means that they're majoring in something minor. Wouldn't it be better to begin by minoring in something major, like those things I just told you? Surely over a five to ten year period, you and I or anybody that's listening to this CD program could certainly become a master in five to ten years time. But you have to make that decision. You see, you made a decision. You made it a must, an absolute must for you to have a job and make money that way. Because that's what you noticed everybody else around you doing. And hey presto, guess why we all have a job? Because that's a decision that was made. But what if instead, 10 years ago, you'd made the same decision now to be financially free by mastering some of those things we've mentioned before? There's a great book that if you haven't read, you should read. It's called The Millionaire Next Door. It describes... A number of people in America that are millionaires, but they're ordinary millionaires, meaning these people have more than a million pounds, but they live in ordinary neighborhoods, driving ordinary cars, living fairly ordinary lives, but they all have more than a million pounds each. And what they've all been doing is, for the last 10 to 15 years, they've been investing 10 to 20% of their income they have invested in either stocks, shares, commodities, or properties. You see, they made their own decisions about what to buy and when to buy it. Because they got themselves educated and then just got started. Over the course of this program, you're going to learn the tools. We're going to remove the blocks that have prevented you from doing these things in the past. Because, again, most of us don't know how to do these things successfully. And what we do know how to do successfully is our job, the thing that we've been doing. Well, that's comfortable. That's what we know. But that will only get you the results you're getting at the moment. You see, the real reason probably you picked up this CD program is you've probably reached the limit of the strategy that you're currently following. It has a ceiling or a limit to it. There's only so much you can achieve out of that because for most people, it involves some kind of exchanging time for money. So now is the time to make some changes. So with that in mind, would you like a formula for guaranteed success? I'm going to give you now my seven step formula for guaranteed success at anything you decide to do. Number one, you've got to absolutely know what it is that you want very clearly. There's an old phrase that says clarity is power, meaning the more clearly defined your outcome, 
the more easy it's going to be to achieve it. If you're ambiguous about what it is that you want, then unfortunately it's much more difficult to make that thing happen. You could say, well, I just like to have more money. But how much is more money? How much is enough? Because you could walk outside in the street today and find a small coin and pick it up, and that, that's more money. But is it the money that you want? Probably not. So we've got to start to become outcome focused. Every day, we've got to be saying to ourselves, what is my outcome for today? Because we're not used to doing this. We're kind of used to just being spontaneous, just showing up and see what happens. And the problem with that is, whenever we don't have a clear focus, what happens is we find ourselves being pulled into different things. We get pulled into things that can distract us and move us away from what we really, really need to be happening in our lives. We can find ourselves easily pulled into the distraction of TV. We can find ourselves pulled easily into the distraction of reading our emails. We can find ourselves pulled in the distraction of going onto the internet and just simply browsing and get caught up buying stuff that we don't really need. We get find ourselves getting pulled in the direction of somebody else that has more certainty than us. What we've got to do, we're very clear about what it is that we want. Now, most people in life don't know with any real clarity what it is that they want. And I believe a lot of that is down to the fact that most people are just too busy, too busy to actually stop and find what's most important for them. In fact, these days, it's even a greeting, isn't it? Sometimes when we walk up to someone, they ask us, how are you? They say to us, are you busy? Who's kidding? Are you busy? Like, who cares? Who cares whether you're busy or not? Somehow, being busy is synonymous with success? I don't think so. Normally, the more busy I am, the more opportunities I'm probably missing. And I'm certainly not having as much fulfillment as I'd like to have. Wouldn't you like to have a life where you're less busy, but more successful? So freak somebody out next time. Whenever they say to you, are you busy? Say, actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> They'll go up to you and say, are you okay? <laughs> So we've got to get ourselves out of this trap of running around on this wheel. My metaphor is that many people may try to make money running around on a small hamster wheel. And it takes a lot of turns of this hamster wheel in order for enough money to come out to survive or to do well enough to live comfortably. And what we've got to do is sometimes step off of that hamster wheel and realize that there is a ginormous Ferris wheel, if you like, the sort of ones you get in a fairground, a ginormous wheel that's thousands of times bigger than that small hamster wheel. And when we get on that big Ferris wheel, the interesting thing is it turns automatically with little or no effort, and one turn of that giant wheel is worth about a thousand times of the turns on that small wheel. What makes the big wheel turn? It's the people running around on the small wheel. So we've got to stop being a small wheel mentality type person and instead step back and realize the only way to win this game is to leverage ourselves by using the power of other people, leveraging time, leveraging technology, or by leveraging our money in some way. Think about this for a moment. What if I told you that I have a bank and my bank does not offer you a small return on your money for depositing your money in the bank? Because what does the bank do with your money when you put your money into a bank? Do they sit there and stroke it? <laughs> I don't think so. They put your money to work. So who's making the bank rich then? People that put their money into a bank. What if I had a bank and my bank does not offer a one, two, three, four, five percent return on your money? My bank offers a 100% return on your money. 
Let me ask you a question. Would you want to invest in my bank with a 100% return your money in a year? Now, what if I told you that the minimum investment in my bank that you must make as a deposit in order to qualify for a 100% return on your money was, let's say, 5000 You've got to put $5,000 or pounds into your account in order to get a 100% return on your money. So the question is, do you right now have the ability to put that money into the bank? As in, do you have it? Can you do it? Now, many of you are thinking right now, well, actually, no, I can't. I don't have that 5000 to do that right now. And that, I'm here to tell you, is the very reason why most people are stuck where they are financially. Look, I just gave you an opportunity to double your money in a year for an investment of 5000 Now, if you don't have the 5000 right now, shouldn't you have made a decision to borrow the 5000 from any other source possible, provided it wouldn't cost you 100% to borrow the money for a year? So we've got to start thinking about how to make money differently. Because if you're going to borrow money, the only reason you should borrow money is to buy some kind of assets or to make some kind of investment. So we've got to start thinking clearly about what it is that we want. That's why going to seminars is such a great idea. Because when you go to a seminar, you get to focus on yourself exclusively for that period of time. You get to think about all the things that have been, you get to think about what is right now, and make new decisions about where you're gonna go in the next 10 years. The time to create the next 10 years of your life is today, right now. In my Power to Achieve live weekend program, we step by step discover all the barriers that are stopping you. You get two and a half days to design your next 10 years of your life. In one part, we even have you literally write the things that are stopping you on one side of a piece of wood and all your goals and where you're going next, the next 10 years on the other side of the wood and literally have you break through that wood bare hands, karate style. We even take you through a whole deep meaning process to remove all the things that prevented you. And not only that, but we also introduce some of the best people in the world, bar none, in those key areas of making money. The internet, trading stocks or commodities, and property. It's an extraordinary event. I hope you get the opportunity to come and spend some time with me. And I certainly look forward to meeting you face to face. So the first thing, as I said, we've got to learn to do is we've got to know what it is that we want with some real clarity. But we're not outcome focused. In fact, I do some one to one work with people. And quite honestly, much of the time, people don't know what it is that they want. They know more clearly what it is they don't want. And when you keep focusing on what you don't want, what happens is you start to notice more of the things that you don't want around you. They keep popping up into your focus. Think of it this way. I'm now 13 years old and I'm putting the football down to take a penalty for the school district football team. And as I take a step back, I'm saying to myself, whatever you do, Andy, don't hit it over the bar. Whatever you do, Andy, don't hit it over the bar. What is the only target I'm currently giving my mind right now? That's right. The only target I'm giving myself is over the bar. So sure enough, that is where every proprioceptive muscle, where every part of my focus and my being is concentrated on putting the ball over the bar, exactly where I don't want it to go. What I have to do instead is keep my focus on exactly where I want the ball to go in that net. So we've got to start thinking about what it is that we want. And I don't just mean in the whole scheme of your big goals. Of course, I do mean that as well. But just anything that we do. For example, let's say tomorrow night 
you've been invited over to a friend's house for a dinner party. What if instead now on the way over, you said to yourself, what do I actually want the dinner party to be about for me? What kind of experiences do I want to have at the dinner party? How can this help me grow, move forward, have more fun or whatever? So maybe you'd say to yourself, well, I haven't had much fun recently, so I'm really going to let my hair down. I'm going to have gregarious fun. I'm going to be the life and soul of the party. I'm going to really enjoy it. I'm going to look forward to laughing quite a lot. And that's a decision that you make. What about instead you said to yourself, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as an opportunity to network. I'm going to make sure I connect with people that I really don't know very well. I'm going to be interesting to them because I'm going to be interested in them. I'm going to ask them questions, find out what they do. Maybe you go over and you say, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a really good friend tonight. I know that my friend that's invited me over has been having a bit of a rough time. So I'm going to really be there for them. I'm going to going to help them, going to ask them questions and let them know how much I love and care and appreciate them. Maybe you are someone that needs a good friend. Maybe you're going to ask for some help because you've been having some challenges. So maybe you're going to ask for someone to give you some of their time to help you get some distance from some of your challenges. But whatever the decision you make, if you decide ahead of time what your focus will be, then you get the experience that you are driving your bus. You are the co- pilot of your airplane, the captain of your ship. Because literally what you're doing is you're deciding ahead of time the kind of experiences you want to focus on. So you must know what you want with as much clarity as you possibly can. Step number two, it's really important that you imagine yourself having done it already. You must visualize in your mind. You must see some kind of fleeting images. Better if those images are moving, typically. Try to make the images moving images in your mind. Try to add in sound so that you literally have people talking and different sounds in the background. Make sure you step into the picture like you're looking at it through your own eyes. Then sometimes you can step out of the picture and see almost an image of you as if you were somebody else looking back at yourself. We've got to learn to advertise in our own mind. We've got to start to evoke the law of attraction. Now, in recent years, many people have been talking about this law of attraction. And we call it a law, as in a law is something that is absolute. It's something that really is. We don't argue with it. We don't argue with the law of gravity. We kind of just accept it. You know, we certainly wouldn't want to be jumping out of a a large, tall building in order to test whether gravity was true. We accept it, we know it. Now, what if I could right now have you believe and understand that the law of attraction was as certain as the law of gravity? If I did, would you use it? Well, I'm here to tell you that the law of gravity is the law of attraction. There's only one law. The law of gravity and the law of attraction are the same. Meaning, why does the moon circle around the earth? Why does the earth circulate around the sun? Very simply, it's because it is attracted to it. The moon is attracted to the earth. The earth is attracted to the sun. You see, things of a smaller mass are attracted to those things of a larger mass. Now, how is that all useful to you? Because when we have an idea, when we have a thought, what happens is when that thought becomes big enough, when we start resonating at a high enough frequency, what happens is we start to draw towards us all the smaller things All the things that resonate are in harmony with that idea or that thought. Here's another way of thinking about it. I don't know right now if in the place you're listening to this, you have a radio. But whether there's a radio around you or not, one thing we know to be true is if there was a radio and you turned it on, 
and you tuned it into a particular frequency, you would be able to hear sounds that have been generated from many, many miles away and are not physically connected. But because there are radio waves being sent in large signals from a great big tower somewhere, then what happens is your radio set can pick up that frequency. So what that means is right now around you, in front of your face, one inch, two inch, five inches, one feet, ten feet away are radio waves. The room you're in right now has radio waves around it. Now you cannot see them. You cannot know that they're there until you tune in that radio. So radio frequency waves are just a form of energy. But they're a very light form of energy, which is why you cannot see them. And here's what you need to know and please remember. That thoughts are energy. Thoughts are also radio waves in one way, but not actually radio waves, they're thought waves. And the more that you continue to have a particular thought or an idea, the more and more people will start to resonate at the same frequency as you and be drawn to you. In the same way that a radio station has to play its signal a number of different times over and over for more enough people to be happen to tune into it by searching up and down the dials, the more times they do that, the more listeners they will get. So it's quite an amazing thing. We've got to learn how to advertise in our own mind. Because if we're not going to do it, somebody else is going to get in there and do it for us. So one idea is this. Whenever your TV is on, when the adverts come on, turn down the TV, mute it and focus again on your goal. Whether it's your goal for the day or whether it's your goal for the week, the month or the year. For those two or three minutes. When the two or three minutes is up, click and you can begin to listen or watch your program again, whether it's the radio or the TV. And it acts like an anchor. It acts like a trigger to remind you to focus again on your outcomes. But you've got to be clear what the outcome is first, step number one. Otherwise, you won't know what to do when the opportunity arises. Step number three. Step number three is you've got to really feel good about what it is that you want. So when you are visualizing, when you are thinking and advertising in your own mind, you have to start to feel really passionate, really excited about what it is that you're thinking about. If this is your preview of coming attractions, you've got to start feeling so good about it because emotion is created by motion. Meaning, if you want to start feeling good, move your body around a little bit. Start to feel ecstatic about what it is because if thoughts are radio wave signals, if you like, if they're packets of energy, then our emotion vibrates that frequency stronger. And what will happen is it will make your thing manifest or happen more quickly. And I'm sure that most of you would like your goals to happen more quickly. So the way you can do that is to get more passionate about what it is that you're focusing on. You see, the challenge with most people is to miss this step. Most people aren't visualizing enough, therefore not sending enough signals out. Instead, what they're doing is just focusing on what is, keep thinking about what is, and if you think about what is, you get more of what you've got. Of course, if you're looking for change, you've got to go into your mind first. Look, when you're without, go within. Hundreds and thousands of people have had this experience that when in life they start to think about someone they care about or love, soon enough that person calls them. I'm sure you've had an experience like that. So when you're without, go within. Now, most people, they think about what they want a little bit and they get caught up in everyday life and forget to do the thinking about what they want again. So what happens is the frequency begins to die away. And it's not strong enough to be consistent. It's not strong enough to actually make that thing manifest. They might pick it up again in the future and they get caught up again. Or they start thinking about what they want. And because it doesn't happen quickly enough for them, they change their mind and start thinking about something else they want instead. 
<laughs> just when the universe started to work with you to start to bring stuff towards and with you, most people begin to change their mind. The most you can hope for, if you keep doing that, is a very confused unconscious mind. Step number four. You must believe this thing will happen. You've got to absolutely believe it. Think about it as if it's already happened. Create a feeling of expectancy. Expect it to happen. Don't get massively attached to it, thinking, oh, it's got to happen, it's got to happen, and getting all fretful around it. Just have this positive, light feeling of expectation, almost like a childlike curiosity that you develop that means it's going to happen with little resistance at all. Step number five. Break down all the action steps that you need to take into small, bite-sized, manageable chunks. Most projects that are worthwhile will take some time to manifest. And because of that, the end result is quite dramatic. It's quite big. It's quite a big outcome in some way. So what you must do is step backwards from that ultimate outcome and to find a step that we can take today that will move us towards that goal. That way we start to create small wins for ourselves. That way we start to create some momentum as we start to move through our activities, as we start to move through our actions. Don't overwhelm yourself too much by trying to do too many things at once. So make sure your entire focus is on that one thing when you're doing it. And know that's just part of a series of steps that you need to take in order to get to the ultimate outcome. And what will happen is you'll start to feel good because as you're doing that step, as you complete that task, as you tick it off, it starts to feel like you're moving closer and closer to your goal and your target. As a result of that, you'll get more excited. As a result of that, you'll visualize even better. As a result of that, your outcome becomes even clearer to you. And it starts to accelerate the process. Otherwise, if the only way of measuring whether you are doing well or not is if you've attained your goal or not already, then, of course, most days the outcome won't have been achieved because it takes some time to manifest. And what can happen is people can start to feel disheartened, can start to feel like it's taking too long. And, of course, will ultimately start thinking about something else instead and stop manifesting this particular goal. What stops people taking action most of the time is fear. And often that fear is either a fear of the unknown because they don't know everything they need to know. And as we've already said, well, that's fine because <laughs> you're only going to find out what you need to know by getting in there and doing it. Or it can be the fear of failure or in some cases, even the fear of rejection. Well, it's interesting, but in my live seminars, one of the live seminars I do, we do like a firewalk. Literally, we get people to walk across burning hot coals measuring 1,250 degrees barefoot. And I'm here to tell you, people have real genuine fear when they stand in front of that coal bed and see those very hot glowing embers right in front of them. And they take action in spite of their fear by literally using some tools that you're going to be taught on this program to get themselves to take an action that for most people would involve some kind of great pain or fear, they're literally able to outmatch the fire with the power and energy resonating inside their body. So step number five is to break down your action steps into small bite-sized chunks. Step number six, you must evaluate your results along the way. Meaning, you must ask yourself as you do each one of these activities or steps whether what you've achieved, what you're doing, is actually moving you closer or further away from your goal. Look, when you decide upon the action steps in the beginning, you're doing that from a place of not knowing. You don't always know 100% that by taking that particular action step will lead you closer or further away from your goal. But having done the activity, you might start to learn that this action maybe isn't the right one to take. Maybe you learn that what you need to do is take a sideways step to take another action. Maybe you decide that you're going to do one kind of approach to business. And as you start to go down that avenue, you realize actually that approach to business doesn't work. But what you've learned is this different approach to business works much better. So what I'm saying is be prepared to be flexible enough in order to change your approach to what you're doing. Because it might just be 
that a different approach would work. But you wouldn't find out that different approach would work until you took some steps to actually do something new, which you found out then doesn't work very effectively. So you change your focus and do something else instead. So what you're looking to do is decide, am I moving further away or closer to my goal? Because we learn most by doing. So this is the feedback step. And feedback is the breakfast of champions. So when we give ourselves feedback by noticing our results, we get an opportunity to learn what we need to learn along the way to become a master at what we're doing. Think when you first learned to walk, all those many, many years ago. You learned to walk because A, you decided it was a must for you at some point because you modelled those people around you and you saw those things up higher and you wanted to grab and investigate. And when you did it for the first time, you probably didn't do it. You probably didn't even have the muscle strength to do it when you first began. It was actually the struggle to stand up that began to give you the muscle strength you needed to be able to hold yourself up ultimately. Often when we begin a task, we don't have the capability to become great at it. In fact, only by doing the task itself do we gain the capability of achieving that particular goal. I mean, think about most adults, how they approach doing something new. If an adult had never walked before in their life and can only crawl, and now they finally make a decision they're going to attempt to stand up and to walk, (laughs) most adults would do it, fail a few times because they don't have the muscle strength, And just say to themselves, oh, I can't do this. You know, I'm not just cut out. I'm just not cut out for this walking lark and give up and continue doing what they already know. That's what most people are doing with their lives, metaphorically around how they make money and how they have self-fulfillment in their lives. Step number seven. If what you're doing isn't working, change your action. Change your approach. Do a new activity. Change your action based upon what the feedback came in step number six. And now start doing that activity instead. How many times would you have to change it in order to get results? I don't know. But if you keep on noticing the results you're getting and give yourself feedback, if you keep on applying new ideas and keep your outcome ultimately in mind and keep on visualizing what you're doing and the reason why you want to do it, ultimately, If you keep on changing your approach enough and being flexible enough to do so, that you will ultimately succeed. This is a guaranteed success formula. As an example, a little while ago, I heard about a seminar that was taking place in the UK at a really big venue called the London O2 Arena. This arena seats about seven and a half thousand people. And I heard there was going to be this presentation, this seminar, and I really wanted to be one of the keynote speakers at this particular event. Now, I didn't know the promoter. All I knew was this event was taking place. I knew when the date was, and that was it. So I knew my outcome. I knew what I wanted. I wanted to be one of the headline speakers at this program. So I really got clear about what it is that I wanted. I started to imagine myself having done it. I visualized myself on stage, looking out at this massive arena of people. I also sat in the audience and looked back at myself presenting from stage and really having a great time. I listened to the sound of the audience laughing and applauding in all the right places. It made me feel so good to think about this opportunity to stand in front of all those people and impact the lives of so many in just one period of time. And what I did was... I went to a website. I don't know if that website still exists. It was called mygoodnews.com. And what it did was it allowed you to write your own newspaper headline and write your own newspaper article. And then you could literally print it out as if it was a, a real live newspaper. I did so and the headline said, Andy Harrington, big hit at the O2 London Arena. And I wrote down the article of all the things that happened during my time at the O2. And I got some blue sticky tape and I put it on my ceiling above my head in my bedroom so that every night and every morning I could see exactly what my outcome was and I did my whole visualisation again. I believed it was possible. I'd had other promoters that didn't know me have them present at their seminar, so I knew it was possible. So I believe wholeheartedly I could make this happen. I then started to break down the action steps. 
I thought, well, the first thing I could do is I could write him a letter. So I, I did. I wrote him a letter and that didn't work. I didn't get a response. Then I thought, well, I wonder if I could speak to some speakers that's going to be speaking at the event that might know me already. And I found one that didn't know me, but I began to start creating a relationship with them. As a result of being in a relationship with them, I managed to get an opportunity to be in a room where I could influence this person. And that didn't really work. So what I did was I then gave a DVD of me speaking at a program so they could see how good I was. And as soon as they saw that, that's when they decided to give me the opportunity to speak. So I was able to keep changing my approach, little tassel on the way. And I did actually get to speak at that program. I earned 20 times my salary my annual salary in one hour that I used to earn when I worked for an insurance company all those years ago. So it's amazing how far you can come using these tools and these techniques. So to repeat, step number one, know what you want with clarity. Clarity is power. Know exactly what it is that you want. Step number two, imagine yourself having done it. Imagine yourself doing it. Create that vibrational frequency. Number three, feel good about it. Feel passionate about what it is that you want. Number four, believe it with every fiber of your being. Believe it's possible with a state of expectancy. Number five, break down the action into small tasks, small bite-sized chunks. Number six, evaluate your results as you take those actions. And step number seven, change your approach if necessary along the way. I guarantee If you do these action steps, if you do all these steps in this guaranteed success formula, you will become successful. Now, would you like a way of accelerating your results by using the guaranteed success formula? Because there is a way. In life, you can either try to do things through the school of hard knocks, basically doing things yourself, or what you can do is find somebody that's already doing what you want to do at a world-class level before you. And provided you can get enough rapport with that person that they'll assist you, what you could learn to do is you could model their success. Most people's success comes from modeling, adapting, or changing somebody's model that's gone before you. The great speaker, Anthony Robbins, he modeled Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn was his original mentor, and he worked for Jim Rohn but ultimately used Jim Rohn's techniques and tools and strategies and began his own speaking business that literally now has made him one of the most entertaining and most sought after speakers in the world. And I'm sure right now the people that have worked with me over the years have also started to model me in exactly the same way. There are a number of people now that used to work for me that now have their own businesses and are doing extremely well. I've actually made a number of people millionaires that now have millionaire businesses as a result of working with me in the past. So what we're looking to do here is stand on the shoulders of somebody that's gone before you. So this is literally copying what a successful person does in your particular field of endeavor. When we say model the person, we don't mean become them, literally. We don't mean, you know, stop being yourself and start being them. It literally means just modeling those things that make this person be able to produce that particular kind of result. So there are four things we need to do when we're modeling. Number one, we have to find a world class model. Literally, you've got to find someone worth modeling. Whatever you want to achieve in life, there's already somebody doing at a world class level before you. So if that's true, we need to find that person. And when I say world class, It doesn't necessarily mean they are world class because they're world renowned. It just means even locally, are they really, really good at what they do? If you were to produce the same results as them, would that satisfy you? Would you be happy? So we find a world class model and then we have to do three things further. We have to model this person's beliefs that they have around this thing that they do. They will definitely have key beliefs about themselves, about their activity, their market. And what we've got to do is we've got to find out what those beliefs are. Now, in many cases, you can actually model those beliefs just by listening to the person, by reading a book that they have written, by paying close attention. You can see what this person actually believes. 
You can hear it in the conversations they have. We can even model the greats, the great people who have gone before us, because normally they've written a book and have recorded some of their key beliefs. So we could do that. So we've got to model what it is that drives this person. What is the values also that drives this person? What is most important to them in life? Where do they spend their time and their focus? What parts of what they do are important to them? So we've got to be able to model, A, their beliefs, and also their values, things that are important to them that they spend time focusing upon. The next thing that we need to do is we must model their mental processing strategies or techniques. What I mean by that is, let's take an example of golf. If you want to model a successful and great golfer, then whoever happens right now to be the number one golfer in the world, I can guarantee you this, that they have a mental preparational process that they use before they go and play golf and while they're playing golf. For example, when they line up a putt, what is the mental processing they go through as they go through that putt? What processing do they go through as they line up that putt? What processing do they do as they address the ball? What mental processing do they do as they actually strike the ball? What processing do they do after they've struck the ball? What do they go through? Do they say something to themselves? Do they picture something to themselves? Do they breathe in a certain way? What is exactly what it is that they do mentally to prepare themselves for that particular activity that they're performing? And that will be true for any activity at all. Whether you're a public speaker, you play a particular sport like golf or football or even a martial art like karate, there'll be a mental preparation before and during the actual activity itself. Whether you're a top CEO, business person, whether you're an internet marketer, there'll be key mental processing strategies that someone goes through to produce the results they get. And most people don't bother with that bit because it's a bit we don't see. And because we don't see it, we don't know it's there or don't know how important it really is. In my experience, I will tell you it's vital to know the mental processing strategies that someone goes through in order to produce a particular result. And the final thing we have to model is we have to model the external behavior itself, the actual things that we see. What activities do they actually do? What are their specific action steps that they do? How have they broken down a particular task that they do? What are the individual things they do in order to produce that result? What is the first thing they do? What's the second thing they do? How much of number one? How much of number two? So literally the order and sequence, the syntax, the strategy of what they do. Because you and I can do the same steps, but if we do them in a different order, we might produce a different result. It's a bit like baking a cake. If you and I wanted to model someone who baked a great cake or made a great recipe of some kind, what we'd need to do is we'd need to know the recipe, which would include the ingredients of what we would want to make that cake with, the quality of those ingredients, as in the brand names of those particular ingredients. We then need to know the quantity of those ingredients, as in how much of each bit. We need to know then the order and sequence of how to put those ingredients together and then we have to bake it in an oven at a particular temperature for a particular time to produce that particular result. This is exactly the same when we want to model anybody's successful result at anything. We need to know the recipe. So the recipe can be only followed if A, we have a world-class person who has a recipe of some kind, B, we know the beliefs this person operates from that makes them produce that particular result, that we know their mental processing strategies and techniques that helps them to produce that result consistently, and finally, the physical external behavior, the things they do and when they do them, how they do them, and in what order they do them in, in order to produce that particular result. This is called modeling. And when you come to my Power to Achieve live weekend program, as I really hope that you will, what you're going to learn from some extraordinary people in the world is you're going to learn specifically this. I've worked with these people to extract the model of how they do what they do. And what they're going to do is they're going to begin to teach you that model at my program. 
you're going to begin to learn the specific things of what you do in these key areas. Areas of internet marketing, marketing yourself, your products, your services, or somebody else's products, ideas, or services, how to build a, a list of active followers that you can market to consistently, how to drive traffic to a website, how to convert that traffic into paying customers, how to retain those people, all these little skills that you can do and learn, which means you can learn something that's going to make you a dramatic amount of money over the course of the rest of your life. Learning some specific strategies and how to invest in property, real estate, learning specific strategies of how to invest your money in the money markets, stock market or commodity markets around the world. I've extracted these models from the very best people in the world so you can get, again, exactly the same result. Of course, this is all after you've gotten yourself in the right place psychologically to be able to take advantage of that core quality strategy information. Now it's time for an assignment. I want you to think about who you've been unconsciously modeling over the last few years or over the course of your life. Who have you been unconsciously paying attention to and have picked up some of their traits and following their particular recipe? What has been the advantages of that to you? What have you gained as a result of doing that? And what are the disadvantages of having unconsciously modeled that person? Think about all the upside of modeling this person and then think of all the downside, the things that has cost you to model this person too much. Who have you failed to model? Who's been around you that for one reason or another, you haven't noticed or paid attention to what they're doing? And then I want you to think about this. Who is somebody you could model now? Who is somebody that's already producing the result that you specifically want to produce? Someone that's in your life right now or somebody that could be in your life right now? Somebody that, in your opinion, is world class at what they do. I want you to begin by investigating what are the key beliefs that have driven this person to be able to produce this particular kind of result that they get. If you know the person, then speak to them and find out what their beliefs might be. If you don't know them, try to do some research have they written a book or any articles that can help you to find out the key beliefs that support this person's results? Next, what mental processing do they do? Again, if you know the person, try and find out what do they, how do they think in their mind when they're doing their task? What are the things that they do or have learned to or did in the beginning when they're mentally preparing themselves? Maybe now they don't have to do their mental processing too much because the skill is almost automatic. They don't even know. But find out what do they do? to get that particular kind of result? Do they visualize something particularly? Do they say something to themselves? Do they ask themselves a key question? What is it that drives them to get that result? And finally, what is the key external behavior? What is the recipe? What are all the steps that they took to get where they are? And what steps would you need to take to produce the exact same result yourself? Think of it again like baking a cake. What do you need to do first, second, third, and how much and what quality? Find out all the things this person did and start to build a blueprint of what you would need to do to produce exactly the same result. So to do this, you've got to start thinking about what it is that you want. I want you to begin by asking yourself, what is it that I really, really, really want? Clarity is power. So think about what it is that you really want. Choose something an area of life, and be as specific as you possibly can. Then I want you to begin by every day imagining yourself having done it. Every time an advert comes on the TV, the radio, or anywhere you see an advert, I want you to take that moment to visualize your outcome, to visualize your end goal, your result. I want you to make sure that you feel good about it while you're doing it. Feel excited, ecstatic. If you need to, stand up and walk around. Punch the air feel good, do something to engage your emotions so you start to feel really good about what it is that you want to do. Believe it with a feeling of expectation. Every day you visualize this, feel good and believe it's going to be possible. A feeling of total certainty it's going to happen for you. Then I want you to break down the action steps. Utilizing the modeling that you've used previously, start to build some action steps of what you need to do in order to get this result using the model you learned from the modeling exercise. 
and then begin to take those actions. As you take those actions, notice whether you're moving closer or further away from your goal. What result did you produce? Do you need to do it again, but in a different way? Do you need to change your approach and do a different activity? But notice where you're moving in relation to your goal. And as I said, if necessary, change your approach and keep on refining, improving your approach each time. By taking these steps, by finding a world-class model, following the guaranteed success formula, I suspect you'll start to see you moving in a particular direction. That's the end of this particular CD. I look forward to speaking to you again on the next CD, where we take you again to the very next level. Take care.